I want to tell you about writing code and what they did to us. Writing code so you understand some of the matrix that they have on us, all right? In, okay, from the 50s, before the 50s, whatever, mystery and whatever, mystery Babylon going on with machines. In the 50s, they let one and two come out to the big insurance companies. The Univac at Metropolitan Life in the mid to late 50s. That's where my things go back to. That first machine, they come to business in the world. So, <clears throat> um... Okay, 50s, 60s, people could hardly use the machine even. All they could do is one and two little things. They were so big. But to control the machine was so difficult. You know, in those days, you couldn't type to them. You had to, like, take a card. It was a JCL card, punch card. It was, like, this big. And you had to punch holes in code pattern. That would mean, like, an A would have a sum pattern. And a B would have... And you could only do 80 characters... Um, but that was 60s going 70s, it got more alive now. And you could type in, in the um, 70s sometimes, they let you type. TSO. Um, oh, but anyways, what I want to tell you is about writing code, the people who controlled it. We control machines through language. Now, in those days, the languages that we were using on the most... T most time was um, assembler on a low level. And then you started to have some different things come true. Lisp and some language, but you had Fortran. And then business came in with COBOL, which was like jacket and necktie. Very... What the fuck? Get the fuck! The fuck? They train fucking rats, you know. Don't think rats is real in society. They have these fucking rats in society is fucking trained. The language I was telling you. Okay. Now... So out of some of the universities, you got Pascal, Algol, Lisp. These are more creative languages that formalize really in the Unix operating system in the university basements than in um, fine form when they came in the super mini computers. Those were written in C or PL1. These were languages of masters, okay? When you learned this, you were a master. You were a true master. You had your... You had your bag. You had your bag of software, your ideas, your software routines, you knew how to use a machine, so you went to set up a system or diagnose a system, you could just put down your bag and you had all tools of software and you knew what, you know, you were a master, you knew how to get into programs, so even if it was in, on a different system, you had gender benders, different ways to go in and do things, whatever. So anyways, they didn't like this. They didn't like when one man, or, or a couple of men could have such power. No. So, they started to change the language. Yeah. And they come in with this new wave, new age fucking languages, these plus plus languages, these object oriented languages, these class languages, these visual languages. And that's what all these people program machines within go to. And that's why, let me tell you, there's nobody left, I don't think. 
I know there's some people left, but you know how it is. It's like... Anyway, so this was like um, object-oriented languages. And I can tell you a different time about meetings with these people, <clears throat> but differently. So they coded out this, the, the tools of the master. They coded out the tools of the master when it comes to the machine and get it into these high states. But I know people still do it down in the DARPA basements and university basements. And there are kids out there. I know there are kids who are rediscovering and doing things. And there are some of these hackers. I really wonder <clears throat> what kind of guidance they have. I will tell you this about the group anonymous. That is not what you think it is, and that is definitely no good. And if you follow them, you're gonna follow. You're gonna find out some of the worst things about humanity. What they do after dark. Code word. Nightmare. Code word. But um, language. So how, the, how language is used on us, like how English language is used as a mental um, slavery, English language, or the monotone, the disconsonant nature, how you have to interrupt all these special rules. Why do they teach us four different ways? Big letters, little letters, big script, little script. Or that's to confuse us and occupy us from a higher state, you know. So you understand we're talking about a level of the people who invented language and programmed us. Do you know how high that is? Who invented language? Who? Look, you see all the special rules they got for language. This letter, PH, it doesn't sound this, make it sound that way, I before E. How do they have God and dog the same way? Because we know in sacred geometry that's exactly the same thing. When you shine light on that, the same pattern comes up. God and dog. That is not an accident. That's not a coincidence. That's from the people who invented language on us. Who the fuck did that? Fucking idiot bumbleclot. That's language. Language is very dangerous. Language is the highest thing because look, mind is sacred ground. Are you going to disturb that? Mind is sacred ground. Okay, mind is sacred ground. Trespass the frequency with blaspheme energy is not the right thing to do. Language has, has caused a disconnect in our nature. It has cut off the head from the heart. Language. Language is supposed to be more connected. We know it when you say, hey, hey, hey. That sound is from here. Consonant sounds are from up here. K -k -k -k. T -t -t -t. The people who gave us this fucking language better give us a fucking spaceship. I want a spaceship for Jamaica. The Olympics are coming. <laughs> 